So Matt, my friend, we talked about PLCs. We said you convert, you have a power um, module to bring the power to the PLCs. We have input output devices, we have CPUs, and we have a terminals where you can program these equipment. What this chapter guys talk about is how do you program, developing program for PLCs. So a few things, Adam, I would like to um, mention before before we go into that one, this deck the highlighter. So, um, so how do you do, first of all, develop the program, and you guys have done some with us, for, for, for a PLC using so-called schematic diagrams, schematic diagrams for PLCs, and then how do you connect the external devices into the inputs and outputs terminals of the PLC? You're going to see it's easier said than done in less than a second here, programming here. Um, so with control circuit for BLCs, guys, you draw them typically like ladder diagrams or uh, ladder diagrams or schematic diagrams um, for the PLCs. Uh, convert into logic diagrams. We will convert them inside from a ladder diagram to logic diagram inside the PLCs. And then we load them into the memories of the PLCs. So these are what, you, what you're going to see in a second. Determine number of inputs, output devices. So when you have your schematics, the first thing, Adam, you're going to do how much inputs and output, out, output you're going to have. It depends on how many inputs and output devices you're going to have in the system. And I do have an example for you, Matt. Assign the external input output devices to a specific input output devices. So we have external input output. They have to be assigned to input output terminals, which you're going to see easier said than done. Okay, here's where I would like, guys, your attention on that one. So look at this. So Adam, for this one, I would like to go, actually, this is probably the heart of it. Here you go. That's all right. Okay, let's go in here. Okay, if I can get you guys to understand, this is um, a relay logic diagram, um, Karen, relay logic diagram, and for two, for two pumps. Um, this is my pump number one. Can you see that? It is contactor, multiple contactors. Um, pump one, and right underneath that, is uh, pump number two, pump number two, okay, so this is M1, uh, machine one, this is M2, can you see that? And in the lift station, Derek, if you have a lift station, they have two pumps. Any one pump, guys, can handle both, uh, any one pump can handle the load of pumping all these water or sludge water into the lift station, but they, do, they want to alternate them, so imagine these are two pumps, Pump one, pump two, and I want to turn them on up. So this is called M1 contacts. This is M2 contacts. And I don't want to use PLCs because I'm cheap. <laughs> I want to use relay logic, right? Look how they do it in the relay logic. The first thing you need to bring to your attention, guys, is they have an on-off switch for the system. Can you guys see that one? This one, if you can put the system in an on position or off position. So what does that mean? This is safety. If I put it in an off position, can you see that? If you put it in the off position, the system will never work, basically. And so you have, uh, let's just say these are what? Uh, 120 volt, 120 volt, coming from 480 transformer, terminal 480 transformer. So I have a 480 transformer bringing the power to 120 amp. I, the first thing you bring it into a, a, a disconnect switch, basically disconnect circuit switch, the whole system. I have a floating device here. Um, and then I can select pump one or pump two or auto. I can select pump one or pump two or auto. So if I want pump one to work, I don't know if you guys can see, you click this one here, you put it in pump one, and pump one will, this will energize, and then this, these will close, and now pump one is running. Did you see that? When you, when you put it here. If I only put it in pump two, no problem. You turn it to pump two. Now pump two is energized here and then um, manually, and then this contact will close, and then pump two is running. So you have a selector switch. You could put it pump one, pump two, or auto. Pump one, pump two, auto. So pump one and pump two manually, you can force one of them to work manually. You go there, selector switch. If you put it in auto, which is this one, the interesting one, right here, if you select the auto, guys, so I'm going to go erase these because the auto is the really the... the the most important one. If you select the auto exactly like it, it's doing, and then the floating switch closes, now that lift station, it's a well, have all the sludge inside it, the water keeps going up, 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 until it hits that floating switch. When it hits the floating switch, there are two contacts, it closes it. Can you see that? 
The floating switch closes the contacts. Now I got a signal. I have a signal here. So the first thing that is going to happen, and if you ever get a signal, this will energize in auto. These will close. Now pump one starts working. And at the same time, this will close. This contact will close, right? Energizing a timer. So I have a timer here. The timer starts timing. When the timer times off, this will close here. And another control video will close and will close this contact. So it holds the timer uh, energized. It holds the timer energized. And at the same time, it opens this contact. It opens this contact. What it's trying to do, Karen, this system is, it's trying to, if you put it in auto, the first time the well is full of sludge and you want to pump it, pump one start, keeps running until it lowers it down to the desired value, then this guy will open. Next time, instead of pump one doing it, pump two will do it. So they alternate, guys, they exercise both of them. They do them a lot in lift stations wastewater lift station or pumps in wells uh they have two pumps if you allow pump one to work all the time pump two might malfunction when you need it so you exercise both of them any one of them can do the job but they are there for safety redundancy so if one of them fails, the other one will pick does that make sense so that's how they do them uh, and the timers i have a timer here and a control relay is to make sure if they're put in auto that first time pump one will run does its job and then turn off. Then next time it calls for a pump to run, it must be pump two. So it goes pump one, pump two, pump one, pump two, pump one, pump two forever. So they, you can achieve that one, guys, through a timer and a, con uh, a control reading, a timer and control reading. So look what happened. So now, um, now we'll say, so this is closed. Can you see that this is open? Now this also, um, this guy, is, it closes right here then because it's driven by a uh, control reading. Now, next time we call, now this opens, when this is open, this will de-energize. Now, this is de-energized, M1 de-energizes. And the first thing happened when M1 de-energizes, guys, this will be de-energized, right? This will be de-energized. And, um, and my control relay, my control relay, uh, my timer still energized through the, uh, through the, um, through the uh, relay so next time it calls for um, this closes look what's happened uh, this is already open so the next one that's gonna this is closed so that the power is going to come from here can you guys see that here here all the way back and now this pump is closed now pump two is running this time pump two is running and, and when it runs it opens this to the energize the timer and when this is open, of course, this will open too. So then it the control relay. And this is close to put it in, uh, in the normal condition. So gentlemen, this is a relay logic that can allow you to alternate two pumps. I know Matt, you will be doing it with us in the second semester. You guys should have, this should be a piece of cake for you because you're coming from, uh, well, not piece of cake, but it should be, uh, should be doable. So, this, this section here, guys, this section here is to get you to alternate the two pumps, to alternate the two pumps. Okay, so let me just tell you how, this is how you do it with um, relays. Um, now, we talked about this one, guys. I want to bring to your attention the inputs that we have here, um, Adam. We have, here's one input coming to the PLCs. Here's another input, a third input, a fourth input, and a fifth input. These are all inputs coming to the PLCs. Where are the outputs? Here's my output here and output here. These are my two outputs. Okay. So um, when you program PLCs, guys, they give them numbers. Typically, 1 through 16 assigned to the inputs, 17 through 24, and this one assigned to the outputs. Internal relays that start from 100 all the way to 75, and the timers, they're assigning 200 to 225. Derek, do you remember that when you guys with with um, with Scott, he told you when you put a timer, start at this value, a bigger value, right? So they don't overlap. So because as far as the PLC concerned, doesn't could distinguish between the P, uh, you have to put them, assign them a separate, unique numbers. Can you see that they don't overlap these numbers? <clears throat> so if I want a relay, I'm going to go between 100 and 175. If I need a timer, I should pick a number between 200 and 225 for this one. Okay. This is how you guys bring, look at this. This is how you bring the input into the PLCs. 
Can you guys see that? I want to bring to your attention, guys, the, um, the input to the PLCs. Can you guys see input number one? I have input number one, input number two, input number three, input number four, and input number five. All these are one, two, three, four, five inputs. The outputs are 17 and 18, which is going to a memory contactor. That's the output. That's how you wire, um, Adam, that's how you wire the inputs of this system into these PLCs. That's how you wire the inputs of these system to the PLCs. I want to bring to your attention, guys, I'm bringing 120 right from here. Here's my hot. Here's my neutral. I'm taking my neutral and tapping it into this side here. Um, and also the hot and uh, the common. I'm taking my common also. I have my common hot to these, to the relays and what's not. So that's um, Karen, what you did and what you probably didn't like <laughs> with the PLCs when you guys program it. You, you, you bring these signals input into the PLCs. Now, after that, you need to uh, program it. Kind of practice uh, industries to leave the overload. The overload contacts, guys, typically are left open, so you have an external overload. I don't know if you guys can see. These are external overload to the PLCs. I brought my input uh, five, as five separate unique inputs into the PLCs, two outputs into the PLCs, and I want to program it. Uh, I left my, uh, my overload contacts in. Um, okay, shows that the starter will de-energize and the event will overload. So you just want to make sure the overload is protecting the system. So you want to make sure you depend on an external overload to protect your system here. Um, you can have another context, guys, that you can use as as uh, as an overload. But when you do um, do the schematics, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with that one. Now, when you program the schematics, it here's the rule. Rule number one, guys, is each line must end up with a coil. When you do, do you remember that? Um, Scott telling you guys that, and you're going to be hearing this one, Matt, next semester. When you do the lines, that diagram, each line must end up with a coil. A coil, right? A coil is a load. So you can't, if you guys take a contact, 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 contact between L1 and L2, you know what you're going to have then? You have a short circuit, dead short. You have to have end up with a coil. That's the most important. Like a coil, or a relay? Well, a coil is a relay. Yeah. Yeah. A coil. Yeah. A coil is basically a relay. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. A coil. A real coil, or typically is a hypothetical coil, this one. Any contact labeled the same number as the coil will be driven by the same coil. So if I have coil 20, this will drive contact 20. So if you have a contact, guys, with number 20 and a coil number 20, this means the coil 20 will drive the contact 20. That's rule number two. Rule number two for the schematic diagram. Each relay can have infinite number of contacts inside that. So you can have as many contacts assigned to it as needed. They can be normally closed or normally open, no problem, number two or number three. Any coil assigned to the same number as an output will contact the output. So number four, when you assign a coil five, this will be controlled output five. When you put a five next to a coil, uh, this means guys will be controlling an output five, output five. Any comments guys about the rules of the programming? I know I'm reminding you for something probably some of you don't like. Um, any contact assigned to the same number as the input is controlled by the input. So if you have a contact five, this uh, contact three, for example, this is input three will control contact three. Uh, PLC assumes input to be low, no power uh, applied, then the program is loaded into it. So you assume no load is zero. When you don't have a signal, you have a zero volt, basically. The number of contacts can be assigned to the same input. You can have multiple contacts driving the same um, uh, input. Number of contacts can be assigned to the same input. You can have uh, one input driving multiple contacts inside the PLCs, and you're going to see it in, in less than a second. Um, okay, so then you're going to change the schematics into PLCs, draw the logic that will control the operation of motor M1, and um, add the logic. So the rest of it, um, Derek, is they're taking that two pumps with relays, guys, that we have, so we have a selector switch, we have a safety switch. We have a selector switch, pump one, pump two, or auto. And we have uh, two pumps. And you can use either timers with them to control them, or you can use a PLC. So this is converting a logic diagram into a PLC diagram. Um, 
pump one terminate to a bypass. Here's what's going to look like. Um, so the rest of it, guys, is converting converting these into the PLCs. I'm going to take go directly into into um, into the diagrams with it. So so these are the rules. The last thing I want to show you guys um, basically is how how that that's assigned. So okay. So Adam. Here's the diagram that we're dealing with, and we need to convert this one to put it in the PLCs, right? So here's my PLCs. Oops, all the way up. Let me go. Does it want to do it today? <clears throat> okay. So here's my here's my relay logic that I'm going to convert into PLCs. And I want to remind you guys all the inputs. Here's my inputs. Here's my input, 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 and another input here. All these are output input devices. My output devices are this one and this one, my output devices. So when you um, when you convert them, when you bring them, can you guys see how you bring the input devices to the input section? Uh, when you wire them to the PLCs, I have my five inputs. Here's my five inputs coming in here. One from pump, one from the uh, switch on off switch. One from pump one, one from pump, uh, one from the floating switch, of course, one and two from floating switch, pump one, pump two, and arrow, pump one and pump two, and arrow. And the output, these are input, my inputs. My outputs, guys, is right in here, coming from these two, two outputs, which is going to two coils uh, with an overload context, each one of them. So this is how you wire it. I want to remind you guys, this is, if you don't have a PLC, that's how it's going to be wired, right? If you have a PLCs, that's how you bring the input to the PLCs. Every input is unique, separate. Now, programming it. When you program it, uh, Adam, you're going to bring input. Here's my input. Input one, two, three. Really simple, very easy. Here's my pump number one, number 17. This is going to drive pump number one. So I have input one. I need input from the selector switch and input from uh, the floating switch and input from pump one when these are all closed this relay will close output 17 will close this will close to hold it and i have pump 17 running pump 17 running so this this is basically how um how you do it now you need also a manual bypass this is the toy model if you're going manual bypass, manual by bypass guys will get you this branch here. You can either close this, this, this will energize, this will close. That's your auto. Now, if you put it in manual, you can close this one and these two, this one and these two are already closed. Get this from manual. Um, is this a manual? I think one of them is a manual. Um, and then you can get you that manual or auto. That will get you the manual. Uh, bypass number one. Okay, so um, number three is a bypass. Number three is a bypass. Okay, this is the manual. This is manual. Manual operation. This is auto. Auto. Auto operation versus manual operation. So this is the control. This is how you program uh, the PLC. So Matt, you're gonna with um, Jeff now. They're going to give you an S7200 software. You're going to go grab, literally grab these symbols and drop one, two, three, and drop these symbols and connect them with wires. And then load them into the system. And name them. You're going to be named the same. So when you guys name them, can you guys see name? If they're named one, this is coming from input one. Can you guys see? I want to bring your attention. These two are coming from input one. These two are coming from input one. This one on input three, this input three. This is the auto switch, this is the manual switch. So I can turn this coil manually. I don't know if you guys can see that. I can this coil, turn this coil manually or through auto. Manually or through auto. So if it's through auto, here's my selector switch closes. My floating switch closes. My auto is connected. Now this coil energizes, pump one start. This is number 17, we'll close this one. Now my pump one is running, auto. Now if my pump one, if I want to run it manual, no problem, just go there. This is already closed, and this is already closed. Why don't you go manually, manually guys, and flip the switch that says pump one. Now you can start the system manually. Any comments guys about starting pump one manual and auto? 
Okay, take the second one, guys. Right underneath there, the same thing for pump two. Can you guys see that? Same identical diagram for pump two. That's how you program it. Same identical um, diagrams for pump two. Now, pump two and pump one. Here's pump one, pump two, both of them identical, except the inputs are different when we, when we start them manually. Um, so that's, that's basically um, the second one. The last thing is you need to have a timer. This is how you program it, Karen. That's the complete program for it. So when you um, when you close, let's take one. Is is number one closes, closes, closes. Now this is energized. Pump one is running. Seventeen closes. Okay. And at the same time, in terms of timer, this one that is right here will close. This guy will close, and this is already closed because of of this. This is control, this is my control relay, will close to hold it, right? Now I have a control relay also energized here. And then um, I have a control relay that's also energized. And then uh, um, this also, this contact will, these two contacts will be closing. These contacts will be closing. And then um, um, the timer, then when 101 energized here on the time, time off, this will uh, close this contact, and then uh, that relay will close, and it will open this contact right in here to prevent the system, and closes this one to prevent the system, guys, from coming back to the pump number one. Um, now, with, when you de-energize the whole system, and you go into pump number two, the opposite is true. You're going number two here, and of course, this will be, um, uh, this will be closed now this will close it and it will de-energize the whole system it will go ahead and de-energize i don't know if you can see here it will de-energize the whole system so gentlemen gentlemen you can use um uh, 17 and 18 to drive the pumps so here's my pump one and pump two and pump two is right here the context for that so this is my, um, uh, what am I here? My, um, this will be 18, that will be drive 18, that will be 17, driven by this. And then the two, the uh, control relay here and the control relay here and the timer to get you off delay. They call it off time delay, um, where you energize the relay, uh, the timer, the timer will click in. When you de-energize the timer, it waits, say, two seconds, if you set it two seconds before it opens the context. So I don't know. It's uh, so that's basically what what you guys can do. And I know we, uh, some of you guys who have taken it probably have done a few of these. But um, when I teach this one, I did this one at night uh, with a group of students. Um, so what I want to summarize, guys, since you guys are designers, and if you are to branch into this field of design, um, so Matt, if they are to hire you to do some design for this project, they will give you this. Or you should come up with this. This is control circuit. That's has nothing to do with the power. So you, we guys put you through a second semester at Dunwoody to understand these. We, we spent a whole one semester for you uh, to understand this one. So these are um, how to build a control circuit from a 120. And then when you, and you're done, this will work forever. If you decided to go next step up, putting a PLC, this is how you convert it. Now you go convert it into PLCs, bring all these inputs and outputs to the PLCs, and then you have to program the PLCs. So you start programming all these PLCs and that ladder, you build this one, an S7200, like you did, Derek, remember that? And then you load it into the PLCs and you hit run and off it goes. Now your softwares will act accordingly. I can't emphasize, guys, the rules when we have a... Uh, a ladder diagrams or schematic diagrams, you read them like a book, an English book, from right to left, and from left to right, and top to bottom. And each one of them, can you guys see that each each rung must end up with a coil? Each one of them must end up with a coil, otherwise you'll short them. <laughs> you can't, here's what you can do. You can't just say, okay, here's one. Another one, a third one, a fourth one, and all the way up to here. If you do this, <laughs> can you see that? Where's your load? That's short. That should bring hot to neutral and shorten them. 
you have to end up right here at the end with a low. What is low? 19. So that will drive relay number 19. Gentlemen, any comments, any questions? <laughs> I know this is a quick introduction to PLCs. I, I hope um, I hope you guys paid attention to it as much as you did in semester one. You will be doing it in semester two. Uh, what's in it for us as a designers? Um, that's a whole different uh, animal that people will hire you to do design this system with PLCs. And uh, so there's a, there's money to be made from this. Now, you know, if you guys want to branch in this system, you need a whole lot of training to understand these. You know, but I am a firm believer, Adam, between what we give you guys in the second semester with uh, uh, Jeff and Scott uh, between motors and PLCs is enough to make you dangerous, basically. But you need to spend a lot of time on understanding the timers and the counters. Did you guys do timers and counters, Derek? Mm -hmm. Timers and counters and what's not. So these are not new topic to you. Cool. So these two chapters, uh, ladies and gentlemen, will introduce you a little bit to the PLCs, give you a flavor. In addition to what we did in semester number two, um, just a quick reminder, uh, if we have, if somebody uh, um, Karen ask you, can you do control design? Yes, with help from a, an engineer, you guys should be able to start you, Adam, drafting these, doing them in CAD or electrical, they call it electrical CAD, drafting electrical CAD. And then, um, then after either you continue being a drafter or you pick up some of the stuff and you start doing the, the design of that control yourself in, um, you know, in conjunction and in addition or with help from a bunch of other smart control engineers. Any comments, my friends, any questions? That's all what I have for you guys with these two little chapters that talk about PLCs, you know. Like I said, 12 weeks, we give you PLCs, 12 weeks and uh, I'm sorry, six weeks PLCs we give and 12 weeks of more or so. All right, that's all I have. I would like.